In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us in the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're going to talk uh, about the new year, about the new day, about a new beginning. Um, this is what God is giving to us in this great gift of the divine will. We've, we've completed a year, 2023, basically, and um, now it's a new year. So tonight, about 1130, we're going to have a mass of reparation, uh, you know, uh, asking the Lord to have mercy on us. And... Uh, uh, the world, everything that we've done outside of the divine will. And then at midnight, we're going to have the, the first mass of the year um, to uh, praise God and to love God and to glorify God and to worship God in honoring Our Lady. And we want to make this new year with a New Year's resolution. What, what we're going to pray about is um, we want to um, uh, make sure that we are longing for the divine will, wanting the divine will, learning the divine will, uh, possessing the divine will. This, this is um, what Jesus asks of Louisa, and he asks us the same. How much do we want this gift? How much do we want to begin to live this abundant life? And so uh, if this is the New Year's resolution, that, that we really begin to study this, uh, to put this into practice, as Louisa did. Um, and um, when we do this, great things are great things are in store. So if any be in Christ, this is from Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, if any be in Christ, a new creature, um, if then they be in Christ, they are a new creature, the old things are passed away, behold, all things are made new. So that when you hear the word new in the divine will, it's it's this, this newness that God is going to bring to the earth, which is basically what he breathed into Adam. And, and so when the kingdom of God established on earth as it is in heaven happens, we're going to enter into this abundant life. This is what's coming. So uh, G, G, we, we're following sacred scripture uh, in Ephesians. Uh, and put on the new man who, according to God, uh, is created in justice and in holiness of truth. So we want to begin this new and abundant life that Jesus is asking in, in this this new 2024. We're going to ask God if we can enter into this gift even more, to possess this gift even more. So in Colossians 3.10, it says, And putting on the new, uh, him who is renewed unto knowledge, according to the image of, of Jesus, basically, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that created him. So we want to begin to learn these secrets, as he tells Louisa, these treasures of heaven that have been hidden for 6,000 years. It's a new beginning, and this is, what the, this is what the saints were longing for. For example, when Jesus says, be perfected as my heavenly Father is perfect, that's what the saints have, have were, they were striving to live this new and abundant life. And um, now Jesus shows us how that's going to be done. As we read, as we study, as we put this into practice, as we learn these lessons from Jesus who taught Louisa and now is teaching us uh, this new and divine way of holiness that John Paul II prophesied uh, is, is, is here. It's begun. Uh, so the final one is, is 2 Peter 3, verse 13. But we look for a new heavens and a new earth, according to his promises, which in which justice dwells. So this new beginning is coming to humanity. And it's really not new. It's what Adam, how Adam lived before the fall in God's image and likeness. Now we, it's going to be new for us because, you know, we understand slightly holiness, goodness, sanctity from a human perspective. Now Jesus is, is going to show us that he's going to he's going to have us enter into this new and divine way of holiness. So, in volume 12, 11, 27, 19, 17, uh, Jesus tells Louisa, "In all human sanctities, there has always been saints who, as the first, have started each kind of sanctity. So there was the saint who started the sanctity of a penitent, 
another saint who started the sanctity of obedience, another saint who started the, the sanctity of humility. And this was all done on a human level. So with all the other sanctities. Now Jesus says, now Jesus says, now I want you, Louisa, and, and your children, this, we are little children of, of, of little mama Louisa, to begin to be the beginning of this new divine way of sanctity, this sanctity of living in my divine will, which is the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. It's that done on a human level. See, what God wants to breathe in us is what we've been praying for for 2,000 years. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And that's that's what's happening with the book of heaven. As, as you read this diary of Louisa, you really begin to understand what the saints have taught us even uh, more fully. We, you begin to understand um, the, the our dogma and doctrine. Uh, sacred scripture becomes alive. Uh, the, you, you begin to understand the sacraments and sacramentals in a way that you've never, never understood before because Jesus is teaching us how to begin to live this abundant life. So in volume four, 11, one, 1999, Louisa says, after, after this, I saw the bloody salt slaughter that was made of those people who were at the bottom of the pillar. So here, this, uh, this purification is coming. The first purification was of the flood uh, with Noah, uh, where, where eight people survived. The second purification was when Jesus died on the cross, he shed every drop of blood and we were washed clean from the, the, the slavery of the devil. And, and, and still, after 2000 years of redemption, we're still going to confession, why? because we're waiting for sanctification. Now the third sanctification, this third purification Jesus is talking about is of fire. And Our Lady said it'll be good for some, bad for most. Well, how can it be something good and bad? It's, it's what's the disposition of the soul? So when we look at the sacred heart of Jesus, it's burning. When we look at the immaculate heart of Mary's heart, it's burning. The new Adam and the new Eve, This abundant love is going to come upon the earth it's going to consume the world in love now if you are in love with god and love jesus and mary it's going to be ecstasy if you if you want the things of the world everything's going to go the way of the world it's going to be gone why the kingdom is coming so jesus says this uh, or louisa said this what a horrible catastrophe Extremely small was the number of those souls who would not be victims. They reached such daringness as to try to kill the Holy Father. And we've seen that in our own life. But then it seemed that the blood that was shed, whose bloody torment victims, they, they were the means of to render strong those souls that are left. So as to sustain that pillar, the pillar of the church, without letting it sway anymore. And then Louisa says, oh, what happy days. What happy days are coming. After this, the days of triumph, the days of peace would arise. The face of the earth seemed to be renewed and the pillar, which would acquire its original prestige, this is the church, and splendor is coming. And oh, she says, oh, happy days. And here, Louisa, she's, in, she's experiencing heaven at this point. And she's seeing, oh, I hail you from afar. Days which shall give great glory to my holy church great honor to the God who is the head of the Holy Church. See, great things are coming. There's nothing to be worried about unless you're, if you're not in the state of grace, there's a lot to worry about. All you have left is wailing and grinding of your teeth. And, and that's, that's not what God wants for you. So he's given us the free will to choose him. So in volume 12, 317, 1921, after I, Jesus, instructed you well, Louisa, I, God, manifested to you, Louisa, your mission, and how in you, Louisa, listen to this, there shall take place the beginning of the fulfillment of the fiat voluntas upon, uh, upon earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom reign on earth, this dust, breathe into this dust on earth as it is in heaven. So Louisa was, was tested, was instructed, and Jesus manifested her mission. And now, as we read the book of heaven, Jesus introduces to us our mission, and our mission is to be one with Louisa. Why? It's not for Louisa, it's, it's to receive the, the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, 
This is why Jesus calls Luis the newborn. This new and abundant life of, of sanctity, the sanctity of sanctities is coming to the earth. That's why everything's falling apart. If you have an old shanty and you get a million dollars, you're going to tear down your shanty and you're going to build a beautiful house, a palace. Jesus says the, the kingdom is coming. A new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. 520, 1, 1, 1927. Now you must know that the one who puts an end to our human will, what's your human will? When you go to confession, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is what I thought. This is what I said. This is what I did. This is what I failed to do. And I don't want to live like this. I, I want to make a firm purpose of the minute to avoid every near occasion of sin. The one who puts an end to their human will, that's your human will. Your human will is why you go to confession. This is where we are. When, when Adam list, listened to the evil one and not to God, he obeyed the evil one and not, to, not, not obeying God, he had to go where the evil one was. And Jesus said, I saw Lucifer fall like lightning to the earth. That's where we've been for 6,000 years. But the time of the reign of the evil one is coming to an end. That's what Our Lady of Revelation tells us, just what she told Bruno. She says, this time has come to an end, she says. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of the reign of the evil one. The kingdom is coming. After 2,000 years of prayer, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It's happening. So Jesus says, he says, once you put an end to your human will you and return back to the, your origin from which you came, this will be new life. This will be the light of life, the light of love, the perennial life. And my divine will then begins in the soul. So that's what Jesus is waiting for. When we say, I want you, Lord, to be the Lord of my heart, my mind, my soul. I, I don't want to be in charge anymore. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it your way. Let your will be done on earth, this dust, as it is in heaven. So Jesus says, see then, I, I came to earth. I wanted to give many examples and similes of how I, Jesus, wanted the human will to end. I wanted to be born at midnight so as to break the night of the human will with a refulgent day of mine. And even though at midnight, the night continues, it does not finish. It is yet, it is, it is yet the, the beginning of a new day. Re, if, you, if you haven't seen The Dawn of a Mystery, um, watch The Dawn of a Mystery. It's on luisapicaretta.me. And it's beautiful. Every time I listen to it, every time I watch it, there's something more that God is teaching. It's, he keeps on expanding our capacity to embrace this gift of gifts. He, Jesus says this, And my holy angels, to give honor to my birth, to point out to everyone this new day of my divine will from midnight on, gladden the vaults of heaven with the new stars and a new sun, it is such as to turn the night more uh, into more uh, than daylight. What's coming is more than daylight. It's the dawning of a mystery. It's the dawning of a new and divine way of holiness. This was the homage that gave that the angels gave to my little humanity, which in which in his humanity resided the full day of the sun, his life, his mother's life, the new Adam and the new Eve of my divine will. And then I call humanity back into its full day, of which God breathed into Adam, the rule of God, the breath of God. So this new divine graft is coming to humanity. In volume 18, 12, 20, 1925, after sin, Adam lost the possession of my divine will. And even though he wept over his fault, and listen to this, and he never sinned again. He sinned no more. He was able to do my divine will, but not possess my most holy divine will. So that's where, that's where the saints were. The saints were doing the will of God, but they never possessed the will of God as Adam did. Well, that, that, that was the, if you want to say, the curse that came upon Adam and his children. So Jesus came to earth 4,000 years later. Mary came to earth, the new Adam and the new Eve. He dies on the cross. He takes our place. When he says it is finished, in the way he said it, the bill has been paid. It's, it's a new beginning for humanity. So what does he do? He gives us the Our Father. And for 2,000 years, we were praying that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus says, now it's going to happen. As it took 4,000 years for the Messiah to come. Now with 2,000 years, half the time, 
the kingdom is coming. And this is the thing that is so astonishing. This is the thing that is so beautiful. He says very, very clearly. He says, um, to, to, because the divine was offended. The divine one who was offended was missing. That's why he couldn't possess the most holy divine will. Who was to form a new and divine graft between humanity and God in order to let humanity cross again the thresholds of the possession of eternal volition? That was Jesus and Mary with him. This graft, Jesus said, was made by me, the eternal word. And after 4,000 years, when after Adam had passed onto the thresholds of eternity, Jesus came to earth. But in spite of this divine graft done and done by me, Jesus says, with tears and sighs and unheard of pains, how many reduce themselves back to the condition of Adam after sin by merely doing my divine will? Others don't even know my divine will. Others rebel against my divine will, Jesus says. Only one who lives in my divine will can will, will rise to the state of Adam innocent before the fall before falling into sin. In fact, there is a great distance between those who do my divine will and those who possess my divine will. And it's the same distance which passes between Adam innocent and after Adam after he sinned. There, there, there's a great distance between the sanctity of the saints by doing the divine will and now what Jesus is giving to the, to the church and to the world, the sanctity of sanctities, this great gift of the divine will. It's what the saints pray for. It's what saints long for. So Jesus says, and I, Jesus, am coming upon earth was to act as God. I was to complete the work of man in everything. I was to raise mankind, humanity, back to the first point of his origin by giving humanity the possession again of my divine will. And even though many make use of my coming as a remedy for their salvation, and therefore take my divine will as medicine and as strength, as antidote, in order not to go to hell, Jesus says, I shall wait still that the souls, this is what he's asking of us, the souls may arise to take the divine will as life, making it known. We, we are learning about this. Your, your family doesn't want it. Your neighbors don't want it. Your coworkers don't want it. He's giving it to you. Making it known. As you read, as you study so that we will take possession of it. And in this way, Jesus says, I, God, shall complete the work of my coming upon earth and the divine graft form anew within the soul. And then they shall have fruit. Remember Jesus, God said to Adam, be fruitful and multiply. It's not just children. It's every thought, every word, every deed, one with God. That's why we go to communion. We go to hold a communion to enter in this communion with God. And the church teaches us, the saints that the Holy Communion lasts at least 15 minutes until the host dissolves. And at that time, it's the greatest time of the day where you adore God and love God and praise God and thank God and worship and worship God. He says, this, this graft is formed anew within humanity and they shall have fruit and with every thought, every word, every deed. And then he says, my tears will turn into celestial and divine smiles for me and for my children. So then he says, there's a new epic that's coming. So Louisa says in volume 15, 420, 1923. Now I was thinking of to myself, if Jesus loves so much that this way of living in the divine will be known, since it shall be a new epic for humanity, that must bring so much good as to surpass, listen to this, the very goods of his redemption. See, redemption isn't completed yet. Well, redemption has to bring sanctification. And that's what Jesus is getting us ready for. So she says, if this is so much good, she should have spoken to the Pope, who as head of the Holy Church, having the authority, could immediately influence the members of the whole church, making known the celestial doctrine and bringing this great good to all of humanity, all of the human generations. Read the three appeals. Louisa says this even clearer. You, Holy Father, must be the first to receive this gift. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be worried about. God has everything planned, and he plans in great detail. Uh, this, this, 
the, when you read the writings of Louisa, uh, like I said, sacred scripture comes alive. The, your dogma doctrine comes alive. The, the lives of the saints become more meaningful to you. Why? He's expanding your capacity to enter into sanctification. It's, it's that full here yet. We're just, just scratching the surface. The door of the kingdom is still closed. Who has the keys to the kingdom? Peter. And that door is going to be opened by Peter. There's nothing to be worried about. Great things are in store. Amazing things are ready to happen. Volume 30, 1, 3, 19, 1932. Indeed, the epic of the Jewish people is being repeated. Now here, this is so great about our God. Listen to what he says. As the Jewish people rebelled without a king, when I was near to coming to earth, they were under the dominion of an alien empire of a barbarous and idolatrous man who didn't even know their God. Yet this was the sign of my nearing coming into their midst. That epic, listen to this, this one holds hands with many things and the disappearance of thrones and empires is the announcement that the kingdom of my divine will is not far. Listen to this, the disappearance of thrones and empires. You're gonna see great changes in every country. Why? This is a sign that the kingdom is coming. You're not gonna see divisions, you know, the good and the bad. What's coming is the disappearance of those in charge, empires of those in charge with the announcement of the kingdom. So as this is announced, the kingdoms around us are going to fall. And they're already beginning. You're seeing the cracks in some of these uh, kingdoms. It has it having be, to be a universal Catholic Pacific kingdom that there shall be no need, listen to this, of kings to dominate it. You're going to have your Lord as your king, as your master, as your, as your, as your all. Each one, listen to this, will be a king to himself. Why? The human misery is going to be gone. The human will is not going to be in control. Jesus said, God made the universe for man. He made the human will for God. God wants to gaze in our gaze. And God wants to listen and listen. That's why he said to Louisa, your senses, your human senses were made for God. God wants us to participate in this, this oneness with him. Each person shall be a king to himself. My divine will shall be for them the law, the guide, the support, the life, the absolute king of all and of each one. And all the arbitrary and right, rightless uh, leaders shall be scattered like dust in the wind. You're not going to have your, this is so close to what God has planned. This new and divine way of holiness is, is here. We want to make this new year, this 2024 the Lord, the Lord's, the Lord's year. We want to make it uh, in everything that we think, say, and do. You want to plead, you want to long for the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Pray in the Our Father with fervor. That, that's why he, he predestined us to live at this time, to give us this new and divine way of holiness that is going to bring about a new and divine way of life in each and every one of us. It's, but it's not new. It's what God breathed into Adam. It's finally we're going back to our origin. That's what Jesus is saying. So he says now there's a new life to be reborn anew. So in volume 7, 1907, uh, Louisa said to herself, I want to aspire to nothing. This is, this is good for this year. I want to aspire to nothing but to love Jesus, to fulfill his holy will perfectly. That that prayer, that should be our New Year's resolution. We want to be one with Jesus. We do not want to leave him alone in the tabernacle anymore. We want to spend time with our Eucharistic Lord. We want to fall in love with our God. At that moment, our Lord told me, Louisa, in my interior, and here is what I want, what I want you. Uh, and, and it is here, Jesus says, that I want you in my most holy divine will. Until the grain of wheat is buried in the earth and dies completely, it cannot rise again to new life, to multiply myself, to give life to other grains. In the same way, until the soul is buried in my divine will. What does that mean? Your human will is your worry, your fear, your anxiety, your complaints, your negativity, your doubts, your sin. Until the human will, Jesus says, is buried 
in my divine will. No more life. I'm not going to give life to worry. I'm not going to feed that demon worry with worry. That's how you're keeping it alive in you. Oh, you don't understand. I have to worry. You're keeping that demon alive in you. Jesus says, this worry had one moment of your life. He says, of course it doesn't. Then he says, stop worrying. This is a command from Jesus. Stop worrying. Stop being fearful. Oh, it's so, it's so, stop it. <laughs> it's Jesus. Until the soul is buried, this human misery is buried in the divine will. No more life. I'm not going to feed the worry, the fear, the anxiety, the complaints, the negativity. Those are all demons. I'm not going to feed it anymore. I'm going to starve it to death. I'm not going to give life to it. I want the divine will to be alive in me. Well, what's the divine will? The divine will is peace, joy, and happiness. Peace, joy. It's heaven. It's heaven. See, the angels are going to seal the communities, and they've already begun. The communities of those who love God are being sealed. Nothing can happen to them. You have to understand this. This is an amazing time to be alive. It's, it's a glorious time to be alive. So Jesus says, until the soul is buried in my divine will to the point of dying completely, no more life to worry, no more life to, to being anxious or complaining or being negative, no more of that. To the point of died, dying completely by dissolving all of her human will within my most holy divine will, Jesus says. The soul cannot rise again to this new and divine life, this abundant life, the, uh, through rising of all the virtues of Jesus, which contains true sanctity, the sanctity of sanctities. So Jesus is asking, this is another thing for, for um, your uh, New Year's resolution. No more worry. I trust in Jesus. Jesus said, we said to St. Faustina, the final devotion I give to my church before I return is divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Jesus, you're my Lord, you're my Savior, you're my Master, you're my King. I'm not worried. I'm not fearful. I'm not anxious. I'm not complaining. I'm not negative. I'm not doubting anymore. That's that's done with my life. I want to see your power, Lord. I want to see your glory, Lord. I want to see how, how beautiful you are so that we all can honor you and praise you and glorify you. Guys, it goes good. Let me see it. Let me see it in you first. Remember the woman who was suffering for 18 years, hemorrhaging? She, she saw Jesus. If I only touch the hem of his garment, the hem is the, on the tiller, the, the, the strings hanging down. That's called the hem. And it says in Leviticus, the Messiah will heal by the hem of his garment. And she touched his hem. And what does Jesus say? Who did this? He knew who did it. But he wanted to hear from her why. And what did you know? You don't hear that conversation, but he said, It's your faith that has saved you. You know who I am, Jesus says to him. You believe in me. And because of that, you're healed. It's the same thing today, but even more so when you learn the command prayer that Jesus teaches to Louisa. Ask, believe that you have received it, and as yours, he said to the apostles. But with what Jesus is showing us now, what he what he did with Peter, when Peter was uh in the boat being tossed by the waves and Jesus is walking on the water. Peter says, if you're the Messiah, command me to come to you. Jesus says, come. Got out of the boat and he walked on water. And he got 20 feet. He starts sinking. And Jesus didn't go, good job, Pete. You made it 20 feet. And then he said, why did you fail? Why did you falter? Where's your faith? Our faith has to be in Jesus. Our confidence has to be in Jesus. Is he your Lord and Savior and Master and King? Is he? Then why are you afraid? Why are you worried? Why are you complaining? Why are you negative? It's got to stop. Jesus says, until, this is what he says, until the soul is buried, the point of die, dying completely and dying, being dissolved with all the, the misery of her human will, he says, and rise again in my divine will, he says, that you, you won't have this divine light, the divine light, this divine light, this divine love. He says, and you won't be able to rise to the virtues of all that, of, of, that Jesus possesses, which is true sanctity. So then he says this. Therefore, let my divine will be the seal. This is the stamp. 
This is the branding, if you want to say, which seals your interior and your exterior, inside and out, all and and all one with my most holy divine will that is risen completely within me. Okay, so Jesus says, I rose from the dead so my children can rise from the death of their human will now before they die. If you wait until after you die, Jesus says, you're going to spend a long time in purgatory, basically. I want you to be free of your misery now by trusting in me, believing in me, hoping in me. He's our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our King, and his mother is with him. Jesus says, by rising completely, I want, I want my life, Jesus says, to rise in you completely so that you have my true life. You find true love. You find true light. And this is the greatest of all the other sanctities to which anyone can aspire. Like, this is what he's telling us. Oh, you want, you want to follow the saints. Okay, that's good and holy and saintly done on a human way, doing the will of God, as Adam did after the fall. Jesus is saying to us, I want you to enter into my life, my mother's life. This new and divine way of holiness, as John Paul II prophesied at the canonization of St. Honorable de Francia, that was Luisa's spiritual director. He says, he says, this is what we're going to enter into. Get ready. What did he say for 27 years? For 27 years, Pope John Paul, Pope St. John Paul II said, um, um, get ready for the, the, the glory of the church in the new spring time of man time. Get ready for the third millennium. St. Padre Pio said the world of the church is going to focus on Luisa Picaretta and the divine will in the third millennium. He said, St. Padre Pio said, Luisa is a second sun that's going to give light and life to everyone and everything. So as the sun goes down in the west, another sun comes up in the east. If there, it's symbolic of there's, there's no more misery. We're going to go back. This is what sanctity is about. The sanctity of sanctities, Jesus says. He says, this is the greatest of all the sanctities that anyone could ever aspire to. Volume 19, 228, 1926, by entering into the divine will, the soul forms one single act within the divine will of God. Why? It's the prime act of God. It's diving into the ocean. The ocean is yours. As, as though naturally she takes part in what she does and contains. More so, since in the order to live in my divine will, the soul is first stripped of the garments of the old guilty Adam and is clothed anew with the garments that are new, holy, and, and of divine royalty. That's our Father. We're going to be clothed in divine nobility. That's why when you wear this holy scapular, our lady said it's the clothing of heaven. It's a little piece of cloth. But what we're going to get is... is Clothed anew, not with the not the old garments of Adam, but the garments of the new Adam, the new Eve, the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. This is divine royalty. See, there's what God has planned. Uh, as Scripture says, "No eye has seen, no ear has heard." When he, what's coming is what God has been waiting to give to His children for six thousand years. And then finally, he says, I found a newborn, Lisa. She's the only one who passed the test, if you want to say. Adam was told not to eat the fruit of the tree in the center of the garden. Lisa was told not to walk anymore. Lisa was told not to eat anymore, not to drink anymore, not to sleep anymore. And she said, fiat, 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 fiat. Always yes, speak that. Which one of us could even possibly do that and then and then jesus said i want you to make i want to make you more like me louisa and that's crucifixion so we crucified louisa every day and then she died and then she rose from the dead then she died then she rose from the dead and she says to jesus if you're if you're gonna kill me bring me to heaven and jesus says no i love seeing you be reborn why this reborn is not just once it's continuously with every heartbeat we're being reborn into a new and divine way of holiness. Every breath, a new and divine way of holiness. We're not going to go through what Louisa went through. She suffered more than any human. She took the place, basically, of a, a human who was now given the gift that Adam lost. Jesus and Mary possessed that gift. Theotokos, uh, the birth, she gives birth to God. 
and then you have uh, Jesus, the Son of God. They, the two of them had this gift. Our Lady, Our Lady, you know, it's, if you if you love Our Lady, read the Prodigies of Our Lady. It's it's magnificent, magnificent. You, you're you're going to hear from Jesus Christ. You're going to hear from her son. You're going to hear from the son of God, how beautiful, how holy, how loving, how perfect this, this woman is. So Jesus says, he's going to clothe us with this divine nobility, clothe us anew with garments of a new and holy Adam. That's Jesus. Volume 19, 527, 26. Therefore, let your nothingness, be always at the mercy of my divine will. So if you think you're something, God can't use you. Oh, look at all, look at all the letters I got behind my name. I got letters behind my name too, but they're not the nice, <laughs> it's a joke. Um, God is, he loves us so much that it's not what you do. It's not how, it's, it's Jesus has to be there. And, and he says, if you're something, I can't use you. You're already something. But if you're nothing, he says, I can work miracles with nothing. And that's what he's doing. With the souls who are reading the book of heaven, it's a new and divine way of holiness is coming for all of humanity. So Jesus says this, let your nothingness be always at the mercy of my divine will. Now, when the three days of darkness comes, it's very important that we pray um, that God have divine mercy on us and, and the world. Because um, it's going to get tough. God's going to show us who we are in his eyes. You know? A lot of people don't go to confession because they don't think there any, there's anything wrong. One thing of sin will keep us out of heaven. One thing of sin. What we have to what we have to learn is we have to turn to His divine mercy. That's why He says the final gift that I give to my church before I return is divine mercy. He says if you want the unity of the light of God to operate in you, if you want to call the purpose of creation back to new life in you. You have to live in your nothingness. Now, if you haven't read the, the, the document on nothingness of the soul, that's where we begin in the divine will. I am nothing, God is everything. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. He's my, that's why you genuflect when you go into church. You, you say, you are my Lord, my King, my Master. You kneel in front of the Lord, praising him and glorifying him. That's why you go to adoration, to just stare, to look at God, falling in love with God. It's a great time to be alive. So much is so much is ready to be poured out of, on humanity to overflowing. This is this is what's coming, and this is grace. This is love. This is light. This is life of God. Five twenty one five eight nineteen twenty seven. Therefore, as much as I give to a creature, I would always give her little in comparison with giving her the great gift of my divine will. So he says, all the saints that I have given things to. It's little compared to what I've given to Louisa. I've given to Louisa the great gift of my divine will, which is new heavens, more refulgent suns, un unheard of things, surprises never before seen can be seen in this little newborn. And now for those who are one with Louisa, heaven and earth tremble and fall on their knees before a soul who possesses the great gift of my most holy divine will. Why? God's image and likeness is there. The saints already bow in reverence to us. When, when they see we were baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they, they, they bow in reverence of the triune God living within us. When you look at Our Lady, one of her greatest images, uh, unknown at this point, is the divine, divine indwelling. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit divinely indwelling in us the way God originally wanted. And with reason, possessing the great gift of the divine will, because these the, the angels, the saints in heaven see coming out of a soul like Louisa, the vivifying and creative virtue, divine strength, which preserves them in the new life created by God. See, it's 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 overflowing to everyone and everything. It's the prime act of God that we want to enter into. The single act of God. Oh, power of my divine will. If you only knew how many would aspire to your great gift, O oh divine will, to give their lives, to have you reigning in them. Listen, these are the words of Jesus. Oh, power of my divine will. 
if you if they only knew you how many would aspire to your great gift and they would give their lives to have you that's what louisa did right from the beginning she gave her life uh, to enter into this gift. And now this gift is ours if we wish it. And all we have to do is, is begin to allow God to bring us to that awareness uh, that they gave to Louisa, this new and divine way of holiness. 524, 416, 1928. With, this is the divine will's heat. With the divine will heat, this, this sun, S-U-N, shall mold them anew. This heat shall destroy what is run in my children and breathing over them. This is the rule of God. With its divine light, it shall empty them of the weight, the misery, the, the, the trauma of the human will and giving them back their original nature. 2,000 years have gone by. Jesus says, now, now sanctification is going to begin. And that's why... I mean, it's, it's, it, this is, as you read, there's nothing as beautiful as this. As you begin to embrace this, there's nothing as beautiful as this. When Adam sinned, corrupting the seed of his human will, if my divine will had not withdrawn from him, its light, its heat would have restored him immediately. But justice demanded that Adam feel the, the effects of his corrupted seed. And therefore, as my divine will withdrew, Adam felt no more light, no more heat, in his soul. So he was so as to be able to be restored, to maintain the seed of his human will incorrupt. So he ma maintained this incorrupt human will that kept him alive. And that's why this body is food for worms. This body has to die. This great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's coming <laughs> is going to be so amazing, this body can't contain it. Where do you see what God's got planned for humanity? It's a surprise. It's as a good father, he has a great surprise for us. Isn't this perhaps the kingdom of my divine will? It's yearning to return once again back into the midst of humanity, more than sun in the sky, and to remove what? From their seeds, this, this corruption. Why? To be able to return and dominate in the midst of the human family, this abundant life that God breathed into this dust, what came out of the dust was the image and likeness of God. So through holy baptism, we enter into God's image. And now with the gift of the divine world, Jesus says, you're going to re-enter into my divine likeness. That's why we have to go to the prime act of God, the single act of God. This is to enter into this infinite ocean of love, of light, of life. Diving into this infinite ocean, Jesus says, and never end, never exiting. Always participate in the light, the life, the love of God. That's why we were created. It's not for this earth. This is a bus station. This is a train station. We're going to get on that vehicle, whether whatever it is, a plane, a boat, a train, an angel. And we're going to continue our flight in the divine will, as Jesus tells us to do so. So it begins now. It's it's we're on the runway, we're taking off. Why? The kingdom is coming, the new Jerusalem is coming, the new heavens, the new earth is coming. So Jesus says this. Now, he says, as the soul keeps calling my divine will, come divine will, come divine will, come divine will in my walking, come divine will in my talking, come divine will in my gazing, come divine. Will. We're always calling upon the divine will. Come. As the Essenes in, in, in before Jesus' time, it was not the Sadducees, it wasn't the Pharisees, it was the Essenes who were longing for the kingdom, longing for the Messiah. This is what their whole life was waiting for the Messiah. That's why Andrew ran to Peter and said, we have found the Messiah. It's everybody was waiting, the Essenes were waiting. The, the Pharisees and Sadducees knew about it, but they didn't, they didn't show up. They didn't show up to Bethlehem. They didn't follow Jesus. The Essenes were the first to follow Jesus. We have to be the Essenes of the new era. Longing for the kingdom, begging God for the kingdom, calling on the divine will. As the soul keeps calling my divine will, as the beginning of all her being, every thought, every word, every deed, 
she shall feel its divine echo within. This divine echo shall call her back to her beginning, resounding in her, and it shall reorder her anew. That's what's what happened to Louisa. And just as our echo retreated from Adam because he withdrew from our divine will, in the same way as creatures recognize the divine will, love the divine will, want nothing but our divine will, Jesus says, this divine fiat, the echo of our divine will shall return into the midst of humanity. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? The evil one who's been banished from heaven will be banished from earth. When the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven comes on earth as it is in heaven. What does scripture say? No more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more sin, no more death. Oh, that's a thousand years from now. Jesus says to prove that the divine was coming soon is that I've given you the book of heaven. And as those souls who read it, Everything changes for them. Everything changes. Your whole understanding changes. No more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity to the point of no more sin. That isn't here yet, but it's coming. Jesus says, the echo of our divine law shall return into the midst of humanity. The kingdom of our divine fear is precisely this, the return of the divine echo. Not the faraway echo that has often resounded in the hearing of, of humanity from the time he withdrew from our divine will, but the continuous echo that shall resound in the depth of the souls, transforming the souls. Jesus says they will transmute those souls and shall form the divine life in them, giving back to them the order of the way in which humanity was first created. In the order and the way Adam was first created. 524, this is it. 524, 6, 8, 6, 1928. My daughter. And, he, and when we read, he says, my son, my daughter. He talks to us. He, 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 he's teaching us. Uh, he's he's uh, being a father to us. He's being a teacher. He's being a king. I mean, he's, he's really helping us become aware that our true life is it ever? What did Our Lady say to Bruno in 1947? She says, my children are going to enter eternity where they belong and enjoy the beatific vision. That's where we're supposed to be. In eternity, enjoying the beatific vision. She said that the children of, uh, of the devil will always be trapped in time and space, never be able to enter eternity and to enjoy the beatific vision. See, there's a choice. Let this, let this new year be a choice 100% for Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve, through the newborn Louisa. Louisa, my divine will is light, and the prerogative and the virtue of its light is to empty of a human of every passion in the soul, to let her, to, who lets herself be dominated by the divine will. In fact, the divine will of light places itself within her as center. This, this sun, if you want to say. And with its heat and vivifying light, it gets rid of anything that is of human weight, of human misery. Vivifies, converts everything into seeds of divine light, forming a new life in the soul, a new light in the soul, a new love in the soul, with no seed of evil. It will be all pure, all holy, just as she came out of our created hands. But God breathed into the dust. It came out of the dust with the image and likeness of God. That's the divine will. Adam lost it. 4,000 years later, Jesus comes to earth with Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. 2,000 years later, Jesus says, now the people have been praying the Our Father, and now it's going to happen. So pray the Our Father this, this year with fervor, with zeal. May your kingdom come and reign in this dust on earth as it is in heaven. This is the most important time. Make a firm purpose of, of, of making this New Year's resolution of the divine will. Watch what God is going to do. It's nothing to be afraid of. He's getting everything in order. He's getting everything ready as the kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven. So may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, we pray for 
divine healing of, of all our loved ones, all our family, our friends. We pray for this new and divine way of holiness that John Paul II prophesied about begin in this new year, 2024. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, son of the mantle of Mary, through the session Louisa, as God's command, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.